All right, so this screencast is about the formation of Al-Qaeda and bin Laden's perspective, his interpretation of Islam, with the emphasis on his 1998 fatwa. So I'm going to begin here with this quick timeline that pretty much looks at bin Laden's life. Notice how the individual is from Saudi Arabia. His father obtains government contracts to build roads between Mecca and Medina. Let's see, Bin Laden fighting in Afghanistan, Soviet-Afghan war around here, 1979. His influence from the Muslim Brotherhood prior to that. And we start to see 93, Bin Laden organizes Al-Qaeda. So if you've looked at some of my other screencasts, you should know that Bin Laden was allied with a man by the name of Abdullah Azam. Abdullah Azam was leading the fight in Afghanistan against the Soviet Union in 1979, and he wrote his piece, Defense of Muslim Lands. So now we're looking at the early 90s, and pretty much in this situation, you have to look at the decision by Saddam Hussein to invade Kuwait. Quick summary here. Iraq attacks Kuwait. The United Nations sends the military there. Saudi Arabia starts to panic. That's where Mecca and Medina are located. And as a result, Bin Laden gets pretty upset. This is Ramzi Youssef. This guy is related to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. This is an individual who committed the first Trade Center attack in 1993. He was also responsible for the attempt to bring down this Philippine Airlines Flight 434. Why is that significant? Well, in the early 90s, Al-Qaeda really does not exist yet. But you do start to see a couple of uh, events that take place where people are upset about the Iraq invasion of Kuwait and how the United Nations and the United States address this particular invasion. Al-Qaeda in the early 90s, just a couple of lists of items, the 93 Trade Center bombing, some of their plans that luckily never went through. You don't see any real direct attack on the United States until the USS Cole. But we do have some bombings in Africa in 98, which is around the same time when Bin Laden is writing his fatwa. The Pujinka plot. Ramzi Youssef boards a plane. The plane has two legs, which means it's landing in location one and then taking off again. He boards the plane for the first leg, places this bomb, gets off the plane, and then the plane is able to land. Why is this significant? Again, it's the early 90s, and some of the things that eventually will lead to 9-11, some of the long-term plans and the attempted terrorist attacks that have occurred. So where does Bin Laden come into all of this? Pretty much when Saddam Hussein attacks um, Kuwait and the United Nations gets involved, the presence of a U.S. military or United Nations military in Saudi Arabia, where Mecca and Medina are located, seems to really anger Bin Laden. Remember, he was from Saudi Arabia. It was the first item that I referenced in the timeline. So his argument is pretty much that if anybody's going to defend these sacred places, Muslims are going to be the ones to do it. It's not going to be any Western army. It's not going to be any Christian army. It will have to be Muslims. 98, see two attacks in Africa. Look at the combined dead. And again, this is around the same time when Bin Laden is about to write his 1998 Declaration of War. This guy right here is Bin Laden's bodyguard, the father of the leg. And I believe that this individual assisted in the Africa bombings and the USS Cole bombing as well. And he also has a link to some of the 9-11 uh, hijackers. So, Bin Laden's fatwa, what I wanted you to do is take a look at this and pretty much just look at some of the arguments that he makes. I place them in bold. Here he says, for over seven years, the United States has occupied the lands of Islam. He believes that we terrorize its neighbors, that we have a continued aggression against the Iraqi people. 
here he writes that there's a crusader zionist alliance i guess here he's believing that the christians and the jewish people are engaged in an alliance against islam and the crusaders of course is a reference to the crusades the zionists are the people before the creation of israel we're trying to create a jewish homeland it's an interesting line here where is it where he says that it is the duty of all Muslims to kill Americans. Um, just want to point out that, keep in mind, Bin Laden does not represent all of Islam. He represents a small group of Muslims who are buying into his interpretation of Islam. So when he says that the ruling is to kill Americans and their allies, civilian and military, that's him. He's coming up with that. I would argue that he really has no influence he is not speaking for the Muslims of the world. It is his interpretation of Islam. He is basically arguing that the United States and the West have attacked Muslims, and he's doing nothing other than defending himself for his people. That's it.